My name is Evangelia Granioti and we are in, uh, in my exhibition called uh, The Living, the Dead and Those at Sea. It's a solo show in Arles, consisting of uh, different periods of my work. Um, the heart of the project is uh, of the, the curatorial project that I did with Mathieu Orléans, uh, the curator, is the project called Exotica Erotica Etc., which is uh, chronologically arrives first, but is at the end of the show. And it, um, it focuses on my travels in the Mediterranean and uh, around the world on uh, merchant marine boats and on the love affairs, but not only love affairs, but in the intimacy, let's say, of sailors and their love affairs with prostitutes around the world. So, uh, what I'm interested in and what the title resumes, in a way, is, um, so I repeat the title, The Living, the Dead and Those at Sea, is of course those at sea being the sailors, and the sailors being the living dead that move between the ones that are sedentary in our societies and this elsewhere where they are, for us, lost out of sight, so they don't exist. Well, I realized while constructing this show with uh, Sam Stouze and Mathieu Orléans that my work consists a lot um, of, of thematics that deal with populations that are in the margins, that are in displacement. It's a lot about migrations, a lot about intimacy also and desire, about anthropogeographies and people that are um, like shadows. So the dead, socially speaking, and it's basically what I'm interested in uh, the most. So um, when we enter the show, what we see is my most recent uh, works on um, Egypt and Lebanon. Uh, the Egyptian part is really about dead or people living with the dead because it's uh, populations in, um, uh, coming from the interior migrations, Egyptian migration from Upper Egypt to the center or from Sudan or, and other countries to the capital of Egypt. And those people that, because Egypt has, uh, faces a very huge um, uh, urban and uh, accommodation uh, problem, they don't have where to stay and they stay in, in tombs, in cemeteries. So the Mameluk Cemetery, uh, it's called El Arafa, it's uh, uh, like a stripe of six kilometers around the city of Cairo and people stay there like uh, squatting sometimes or with the permission of the owners just to take care of the graves in exchange of a little money eventually uh, or no money at all just to take care of the graves. So for the title being The Living, the Dead and Those at Sea, really I, was, uh, I, I, I wanted to add this last series, but uh, the rest of the show consists of series that I've been working on for years. Next to Egypt we find Lebanon, and I am next to one of the, the, the iconic photos of the Misses of Beirut uh, series. Um, when I finished my work on sailors, I started, uh, I was still into the mood of working with people that are in displacement through the sea. So it was 2015, it was the big uh, blast of uh, an interest of the world, well, uh, as if it didn't happen before, but of refugees coming to Greece through the, the, the coast of uh, Turkey, basically, or, or uh, the down part of the Mediterranean basin. And uh, at the same time I started to work on refugees at, on those islands, I went to Lebanon for the first time. And little by little in Beirut I constructed a project that ended, and it's an ending and a beginning, uh, on the women that are in displacement coming from Asia or from uh, Africa, and that through a system which is an unofficial system called Kafala, they, uh, they find work in Lebanon, but their employees can, if they want, keep their papers, not letting them um, abusing in a certain way all their rights and depending on their ethics, um, even hurting them or not. So I was interested in this population of women that are really like shadows in the daylight, you just see them um, walking around a dog or just dressed in uniforms and disappearing and on the Sunday they uh, either participate in beauty contests, either transform the whole area of uh, downtown and a place, very specific place in Beirut, where they um, 
where they reinvent, reproduce their hometowns. So inside Beirut you will find the small Manila, small uh, Colombo, small Addis Abeba, one street uh, furthermore, uh, uh, I don't know, or, or another city. And they find themselves together with their own people. They go to church, Ethiopians do that a lot. Others cook, Filipino uh, community cooks a lot and sells. And all the women appear under the lights with their amazing dresses or and with big smiles and, and a desire to go, not to hide. For them that are completely uh, ignored and completely in the, not even considered as proper human beings sometimes. They're just numbers or not even numbers. I wanted to, to, to start creating this project, which consisted in um, an interaction, me, artisan of, uh, of Lebanon. I, I started uh, creating a sash, or uh, I don't know how it's called in English, a beauty contest, writing phrases that made more sense than just the simple ones of beauty contest. And this one is uh, Miss Without Papers. There are others called Miss Clandestine. It's not in the show, but it's a dialogue about also me, a stranger, and them, strangers in a strange land, and the way of representation. So it's a game between um, mise-en-scene and documentary. And the project of Beirut is a lot about that. The other two projects, the project of Skuro Barongo and Exotica Erotica, etc., and the other parts of the show, are uh, in their own way, yes, a mix of documentary and fiction. And I invite you to, to check them out.